My name's Tony Gosling. I'm a freelance journalist. I have a radio show in Bristol where we have a political and investigative show every week on a Friday. This week, .org.uk. But the main reason I'm here is to look at the Bilderbergs. And I've got another website, which is Bilderberg.org. I got hold of the domain name uh, back in the 1990s. Funnily enough, because uh, someone gave me a few... I was absolutely broke at the time. And it was uh, the sister of one of Henry Kissinger's goddaughters that gave me 150 quid to buy the domain and set up a website. Really? Why, why does she do that? Well, because she's yeah, she doesn't necessarily buy in to her godfather or her sister's godfather's ideas. Wow. Kissinger, of course, is one of the world's worst war criminals. Yeah. And there's if, if if the police around here are into interested in any kind of anti-terror legislation, he's the guy they should nail. He's the guy that should have the handcuffs on yeah. in the Black Mariah today. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, with all the actions he's caused in Timor and in Indonesia and Chile, is just amazing to see a man like that being able to walk free. Uh, but, but he can't. This yeah. is another point, Luke. Is yeah that uh, he can't. In many countries around the planet, I think I'm right in saying France and Italy and Europe, various other countries, if he gets off a plane in those countries, immediately he's in jail. And he's quite well aware of that. In fact, Daniel Mashover, a Jewish lawyer in London, has been doing a lot of work in trying to get uh, basically prohibition orders on many war criminals. He's been very successful with Israelis. And what does David Cameron and the Conservative government do? One of the first things they came into office is overturn the laws in this country that allow us to, to arrest war criminals. Yeah. Unbelievable, really. The US did the same thing a couple of years back. But so Kissinger's getting limited in the number of countries he can go around to. You have to, be, you have to beam him in by satellite now. <laughs> That's why I asked him, how does it feel to be wanted for mass murder in so many countries? And uh, he didn't really reply. Uh, he called me a coward for when, he's, he, when he was interviewed by Jeremy Paxman on the BBC, who said, "How does it feel to? Does it feel a fraud to have got the Nobel Peace Prize?" He actually stormed out of the studio. Wow. All you heard was a bang of a door, and Mr. Kissinger <laughs> left. Anyway, the man has got lots and lots and lots of uh, criminal, uh, uh, certainly evidence against him and it really is disgusting that he's allowed to walk around but it's not just him in this particular meeting we've got loads I mean it's great that they've, they've given us out the uh, list well beforehand yes yeah. thank you very much uh -huh. back when I was covering this in the early night uh, mid 90s actually quite often you would only have three or four journalists trying to cover it hardly anybody even knew it was going on but also the press release by the Bilderbergs you'd get that after the conference after the last car had left you used to get the, the old press release they finally give it to you here we've had quite a lot of time to look at who's in there HSBC bank figure massively now you in the States will know a lot about them because they've yeah. uh, they've 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 had a bit of a hard time in the courts uh, over money laundering yeah. now this is no joke money laundering because the Mexican drug cartels have been literally going into villages that have criticized what they're doing and murdering scores and scores of people leaving piles of bodies on the edges of the villages HSBC it seems we're quite happy to run these people's cash around in their armored vans for years and years they are the criminals they are other people as soon as they actually no let's not wait till they leave let's send the police in there to put them in handcuffs now because they certainly should be arrested and questioned if not actually just simply jailed I was always wondering when you owning Bilderberg.org I was wondering did you get any offers from anybody to buy it from you was there any even Bilderberg members who tried to buy that domain off of you <laughs> well funnily enough no and I think one of the things see that they don't like any publicity that they know me as a, a former BBC journalist I would be straight on the phone to the BBC and I would be on the yeah. phone to the newspapers saying hey Bilderberg have just asked it and they've got a great little story there yeah. so uh, they they I think they sort of uh, they've they've gone around me a little bit I did actually ask once a few years ago to speak at their conference I sent them a nice polite letter to the office in Leiden in Holland to speak and they didn't reply. After a few weeks, I sent another letter, and they finally did reply with the one word, no, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us ab about uh, the Nigerian who contacted you. The, I heard that a Nigerian dictator contacted you and wanted in on the Bilderberg oh, group. I just remember, it wasn't Nigerian, no. Uh, hang on. Oh, that's right, yes. I got a call a few years ago. I was sitting in a cafe in Gloucester Docks uh, from the office of the president of Malawi. And there was a very nice lady on the phone saying, um, uh, the president's with me and he would like to join the Bilderberg group. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I did wind her up a little bit and I said, uh, has he got lots of money? Yeah. But anyway, the point being, I mean, for example, right now they're discussing Africa in there. Yeah. The challenges for Africa, they call it. And yet not a single African person is invited to the Bilderberg meetings. It's only the NATO countries. Now, Luke, this is disgusting. Is. This is a throwback to the old bad old colonial days of slavery and viciousness towards foreigners and 
That is the insult that Bilderberg is spreading around the world by having a conference discussion topic of challenges for Africa without any Africans allowed in the room. Yeah. Unbelievable, disgusting. And I think you know the world needs to know just what kind of a monstrosity is going on in there. From last year, they had the Syrian National Council. Charlie Skelton did a brilliant article in The Guardian all about this. Uh, this is a fake version of the Syrian people, basically, created uh, by NATO and also attending at the Bilderberg, giving themselves a kind of front pretending to be real people from Syria, but it's not at all. It's a pretend version of that. And what they're doing now, of course, is they're funding um, all sorts of terror groups within Syria in order to try and overthrow the regime. Now, Assad is a, a dictator, you know, he's not the greatest guy on earth, but actually what they're doing is this, they could be starting World War Three here, so they need to back off, stop giving those Islamic terrorists, who by the way are being kind of conned by using the Quran, saying, oh, you know, this is all in the prophecy, you can be a hero for Allah. Uh, and there's con men in there too, you know, getting these guys going. We've got to stop supplying weapons to these terrorists in Syria. Let the place turn back to the beautiful, peaceful country it always has been. And by the way, we've got a British woman who's married to Assad, who we never see on the BBC. Let's have a little bit of her on the BBC. She's a very beautiful and very well-educated woman. And I think that actually, even though it's a dictatorship, they're doing everything they can to allow much more plurality to have opposition parties in Syria now. And they've allowed that. So let's let them get on with it and return to the sort of peace and culture we had. We don't want it being another US, UK, European. Basically, McDonaldization of Syria is not on the cards as far as I'm concerned.